So, in, in a way, Martin, you have been for so many years a sort of best kept secret of the tech house scene because you've been working in the background for so many years and recently you're suddenly at the forefront releasing things and playing quite often. What has changed? If anything has changed? I mean, for me personally, nothing really, I have the feeling, has changed. I mean, I was releasing always uh, a lot of stuff under project names and uh, probably the simple reason why I'm doing now stuff under my name is that I just got, I just ran out of project names. <laughs> That's uh, one of the reasons probably. But yeah, of course, I was always uh, focusing more on people I'm really producing and uh, yeah, it has changed just a little bit to just yeah, a little focus on my on my own ideas and stuff that I really want to release. So that's maybe a little different. But in general, like um, the amount of records I'm putting out is basically the same as I do in the last ten years. Just right now, all under one name. So yeah. What was the most satisfying experience as a producer? I mean, not you as Martin Butrich, but I don't know people that you may have helped during the release and during the making of a record? I mean, satisfying moment, there are like many different, but uh, I think one of the greatest moments uh, was probably having Tom Jones in the studio <laughs> and like uh, moving his hips to one of my songs. And that was pretty impressive for me. Uh, I mean, there, there have been so many, especially like the last 15 years, there's always like little, little moments that happen that I'm really proud of. I mean, I can't really focus on one, but there have been a lot of, but one of them was probably Tom Jones <laughs> moving to my music. So. Well, that's a quite curious experience. And what's missing? I mean, who would you like to collaborate with and you haven't done that yet? Uh, there are also like a, a, a many, many artists. I mean, of course, I, I'd like to like uh, work, uh, would like to work a little bit more with uh, people who are doing like pop music or pop pop singers or anything, or even like from from music from uh, Brazilian musicians like Bebe Gilberto or can be uh, even maybe someone like Pharrell Williams. I mean, I'm open to all that, and I think it's always a great experience for everyone who makes music to be with this kind of people in the studio. So. But uh, I don't really have pointed out a certain person I really want to. I mean, I'm happy about everyone, so. Well, nowadays the, the tech house area is quite crowded. So, um, in which way a producer can make the difference? Uh, I can't say really. I mean, that's maybe a question you should ask someone else. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the, the thing is that, you know, you get quick sucked in as a producer if you see some some kind of music genres work and like especially right now basically everybody is playing deep house I mean it doesn't matter if it's a trans DJ somehow it sounds like deep house or is it a techno DJ um, how to make the difference I have really no idea I mean probably a good step is just not uh, doing exactly the stuff that everyone else is doing and uh, try not to use percussion <laughs> that's maybe a good uh, a good start well, actually, I've seen Matthew Johnson playing a set at the Sonar with 40 minutes with no kick drum. That's impressive, yeah. It's time, now it's up to you to do that, to do the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but on the other side, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's also, you know, you should never forget why you're at certain places. I mean, you know, I, I could also probably start here playing now an ambient set, but uh, I mean, I, I, I don't try to service people. You know, because like uh, people should know who they get, but if they do get me, they should know what they get. And if you all of a sudden try to um, find yourself new on a party, it might be the wrong way. But I totally appreciate like every every artist or producer or live act or DJ who who has like uh, who's brave enough to just try some sometimes something else. But I think it should be always in, in a certain kind of. A place where everybody knows what they get. So, yeah. Do you think that it's important if you're producing electronic music to have a clue about notations, about the pentagram, about harmony and melody and stuff like that? Or is it just another thing, another cup of tea? That's definitely another cup of tea. I mean, like the, the, the music, for example, the part we're on right now, that's all based on, on, on basically on feelings and uh, rhythms and it's not about like who has the craziest melody or something I never heard. So there, uh, that's uh, definitely how you say two 
different pairs of shoes. Like it's, uh, you can't really, really, really um, uh, co say combine it with, with each other. I mean, it's two different worlds. One is definitely the club, and the other one is just the music that you listen to, even if it's at home or at festival or whatever. But uh, you, on this side, you definitely have to. I think you have to follow certain rules to make a uh, party actually happen. And the people come here to have fun and and dance and. Uh, or probably won't help if you make it. <laughs> well, tonight you're offering a, a live set, uh, if I'm right. Yes. And is there any difference today between a DJ set and a live set? Because with all these new software, with Ableton or whatever, it seems like a DJ set is getting even more similar to a live set. But maybe wow. there's still a difference, maybe. I mean, let's say there are DJs out there that have probably more equipment than I do. <laughs> and they, they're just still DJs. And yeah, I'm a live I mean, in the end, of course, uh, I, I was also traveling in the beginning with lots of equipment and lots of stuff and have a lot of synthesizers. Problem is, uh, everything is very fragile, and when all of a sudden you show up on a party which is half your show, but you're still playing it, it's uh, not as joyful as uh, when you when you can make sure you can entertain the people. And for me, in the end, it's, it doesn't matter if someone is playing. Of course, playing with records for DJ is always more sexy than just playing in a laptop. But in the end, what really counts is what I think is what really comes out of the speaker. And you know, I saw a lot of amazing live acts with a lot of uh, great uh, equipment, but after 20 minutes, it was just like a wall of noise. And it, it, I think that the most important thing is just entertaining the people. And I'm not really, I'm not really asking or looking how they do it, as long as they do it good. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, like my set, I could be also probably a DJ. I mean, the, the difference with me is that. You know, I can choose and change my song the way how I want it, but uh, if I if I make it right, of course it sounds like I just play one record. So, and that should be actually the idea to just make it as perfect as possible. That's it.